In this video, we're going to show you how to make some really basic modifications to your yoga practice to help ease some of the more common problems that pop up during pregnancy. So you will learn how to modify your practice to help you with carpal tunnel, to help you with acid reflux, and to help you with the swelling of your legs, your feet, and your ankles. Later, we're going to do a video to show ways that you can ease. It'll be a more, practice, a more full practice on how to ease low back pain, which is another really common complaint during pregnancy. So if you're interested in that, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click on the little red bell to get notifications for when I upload that video. So there are a few different things that you can do to help you with carpal tunnel if you are one of those mamas who, like I used to do, wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning and you just can't even feel your hands. Um, it gets all numb and tingly and is uncomfortable. Um, there are some stretches that I would recommend that you do to kind of help ease that a little bit even before you get to your yoga mat. So one of those is really simple. You bring your hands together in front of your heart. Mm -hmm. Spread your fingers. And then you can just move your hands from side to side. So go really gentle and easy and slow. And as you move your hands from one side to the other, you can feel the undersides of your forearms stretch just a little bit. And then if you find a spot that feels really good, you can stay there for an extra breath. And then interlace your hands and just press your palms away from you for a second. And with your next inhale, palms can go up and overhead. As long as we're here, we might as well go from side to side a couple times. But keep pressing your fingers away. Good, and then bring your hands back down. And bring your right hand out in front of you. Spread your fingers a lot. Left hand's gonna come underneath and grab onto your thumb. And just take a breath or two, pull your thumb back, stretch through your fingers. And then move on to the next finger. And the middle finger. And your ring finger. And your pinky. And then maybe just a couple times, make fists and open, and then do that other hand. So left hand comes out in front, right hand comes underneath, grab onto that thumb, guide it back. So you're definitely feeling a stretch, but of course never any direct pain. And then switch the next finger for a breath, the third finger, your ring finger, and then last and least, your pinky finger. Good. Let that go. Make some fists a couple times. Good. So just a really simple, easy things that you could do maybe right before you go to bed tonight, go to bed at night <laughs> to help with carpal tunnel. Um, if you're in your yoga class, and I do tons of hands and knees positions, down dogs, those sorts of things in my prenatal classes, and a lot of times I see moms kind of sit up and I see them doing this, because I can tell that there's too much pressure on their wrists. What I have them do, I will show you next. So in the studio where I teach, we don't have wedges. If you have a wedge where you're practicing or at home, Absolutely, I would recommend that. But if you don't have a wedge, you can just roll up the front edge of your mat a little bit. And then put your heels of your hands onto the roll. So just like that. 
and then the fingers are going to come off and onto the floor. And then you press down through your finger pads and your knuckles, and then that takes a lot of the pressure off of the wrists. So the more you ground down through your knuckles, the less pressure will be on the wrist. And you can do all of the poses that you do um, on hands and knees this way. All right. How does that feel, Katie? Great. Little things can make a huge difference. So take a breath or two, and then come back to sit on your heels. Cool. So Katie is full term now. Yes, you're at 37 weeks. Yep. And a lot of women, when they get to the later parts of their pregnancy, they notice a lot of swelling through their hands and certainly through their feet and their ankles. Um, there are a couple non-yoga things you can do to help with that. So I will just mention drink all the water and then drink a whole lot more. <laughs> and I actually talked to a midwife the other day, and I didn't realize this, but I want to mention it because I didn't know, eating asparagus can really help. Asparagus, watermelon, things that are kind of natural diuretic, she said, can really help with swelling. So that's another thing you could do. Um, Yoga-wise though, legs up the wall, or what we're gonna show you now is legs up the couch because I don't have a full wall in my camera shot. But I recommend if you are starting to have the swelling through the feet to do this like every night would be great before bed. So I'm going to have Katie come over. We're going to use a bolster for this one. And she's just going to put her hip on her bolster. And then hands come down to the floor. <laughs> and wee, legs go up. <laughs> there is a article on my website that shows a different way to get into legs up the wall. So if you're interested in this, and this seems a little bit hard to get into, <laughs> It's actually going to be a little bit of a challenge to get into once you're really pregnant anyway, but it's totally worth the effort. But go to my, um, go to my website, spoiledyogi.com, and look up legs up the wall modifications. There are some pictures. We get up a little bit closer, and you can see exactly how to set yourself up. And then once you get here, I recommend palms face up. And you can stay here for five minutes, 10 minutes. This is a good place to take your Shavasana or your final resting pose after a practice. And then of course, as you are just going throughout your day, even if you can't get into this position, like if you have a desk job or if you're on your feet all day, take as many breaks as you can to sit down and put your feet up. I think that's pretty obvious, but that can be a big help too. If I was against the wall, my feet would just be straight up. Yep. Yep, if you were against the wall, your feet would be straight up. That was a good question. And then your whole leg is supported on the wall. And then whenever you're done and ready to come out, you'll just roll off to the side. So always roll to the side and into your hands to help press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. And then last but not least, we will show you how to modify for acid reflux. A lot of times, especially when baby is growing and higher up, mama is around the end of their second trimester, a lot of times start noticing a lot more acid reflux. And what we do in yoga with all of the forward bending can actually exacerbate that and make it worse. Katie carried around, <laughs> she's laughing because Katie carried around a bottle of Tums with her for weeks. She doesn't have one today though, so. Well, I've got a daily pill now. Oh, okay. She had to step it up a notch. <laughs> I always tell mamas, when you get toward the end of pregnancy and baby drops a little bit, you breathe a little bit better and that acid reflux isn't quite as bad for a lot of people. Anyway. If you're in your yoga class, prenatal yoga class or regular yoga class, and the forward bending 
is causing that um, acid reflux to be a problem, here's what I recommend to um, modify. And it's really simple, but a lot of people don't know you can do this. You just don't fold over. <laughs> so let me show you what I mean by that. Katie, come to the front edge of your mat. Katie, get some blocks. Mm -hmm. She's going to set herself up so her feet are a good wide hip distance or wider apart so that when she folds forward, she doesn't squish the baby. But bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, make a big breath in. And then as you exhale, fold forward like you would in a sun salutation. So hands come out to the side and just fold forward, long spine, fingertips come to your blocks. Good. Inhale, reach your chest forward, long spine. And when you exhale and everybody else folds, you just stay upright. Yeah? And then inhale, reach your arms out to the side, come all the way back up to stand. Maybe gaze goes up at the thumbs. And then exhale, hands come together in front of the heart. So it's as simple as that. <laughs> you just skip the things that make you uncomfortable or make your problem a little harder. And that goes for any of this stuff. If your wrists, um, if it doesn't help your wrists to come up onto the um, mat, just child's pose, right? Next week, we'll talk about low back pain.